There's a devastating new report out by the Inspector General of Health and Human Services. You can go to Breitbart by Winton Hall. You want to hear this? Now I'm convinced this is part of a plan. The Inspector General released a report today. It reveals that the Obama administration has yet to determine whether about 1.3 million of the over 8 million Obamacare enrollees are U.S. citizens lawfully in the country. You and I are now subsidizing. We are paying for individuals on Obamacare who may be illegal aliens or otherwise here illegally. The finding located on page 11 of the report states that 44% of the remaining 2.6 million application inconsistencies are relating to verifying citizenship, national status, and lawful presence. Another 960,000 application inconsistencies were related to verifying whether the subsidy applicants provided accurate income information. And Obama sits there yelling at everybody, demanding, essentially, he's... uh, He's pounding the table like a prebubescent teenager, demanding more power, demanding more control, demanding more programs. And look at this. It's not even addressed properly. The Inspector General report only covered the federal Obamacare exchanges to determine how the Obama administration resolved verification problems through December 2013. As for the 15 state-run Obamacare exchanges, the report says four... Oregon, Nevada, Vermont, and Massachusetts are simply, quote, unable to resolve inconsistencies. So Oregon, Nevada, Vermont, Massachusetts, they can't even figure out what's going on. This is a complete nightmare. The Washington Compost reported in May as many as one million Obamacare enrollees may be receiving incorrect taxpayer-funded subsidies due to Obamacare's continued technical failures and inability to properly verify income and citizenship eligibility. One year ago, conservatives warned the Obama administration's decision to use the so-called honor system for income eligibility was merely a backdoor way to get as many individuals on the public dole as possible. The Office of Inspector General determined, quote, the federal marketplace was generally incapable of resolving most inconsistencies. This law is going to cost us $2.6 trillion over the next 10 years. $2.6 $2.6 trillion. And it appears out of some of these so-called 8 million enrollees, 1.3 million of them may well be illegal aliens. And now you know why Obama is not securing the border. Now you know why Obama is bringing in as many children as he can. Because we can't deport them. Now you know why Obama has a pen and a phone and defies Congress. And it's about to defy the Supreme Court when it comes to the Hobby Lobby law. That's right. He's getting more executive actions ready. We have a full-fledged imperial president on our hands. A man who has no respect for you, no respect for the rule of law, no respect for our history and tradition. And two and a half years more of this. And he is supported by the fascist party, the Democrat party, which supports all of it. And wants them to go even further. So, 1.3 million, I'm rounding it up at a 1.295.571. million of over 8 million Obamacare enrollees. They don't know if they're U.S. citizens or not. There's inconsistencies related to verifying their citizenship, national status, and lawful presence. We hear nothing from Jeb Bush, not about this. We hear nothing from the U.S. Chamber of Crony Capitalism. And let me tell you why, folks. Because we are the ones who are going to pay for this. We are the ones who subsidize everything. We subsidize the banks. We subsidize Wall Street. We subsidize the poor. We subsidize the debt. We subsidize illegal aliens. We subsidize everything. And then there's not enough money available for roads and schools and the things that we are actually paying for. We're supposed to be paying for. This is a disaster. This is a real alarm bell. This is from the Inspector General. Nobody else made it up over at HHS. And nobody's been asked to account for this. The president's still in his power-grabbing mode. Nobody asked to account for this. 
as he lied through his teeth to us time and time and time again about this law. Just as he lies about, oh, I'm, we need to have this immigration law so it's nicely managed and everybody will be required to speak English. The first requirement that anybody is required to speak English will go into federal court in front of some liberal activist judge and it'll be thrown out. This is only the first step if they get their amnesty, their comprehensive immigration reform. The courts are not going to allow, quote-unquote, dual citizenship. What, are they second-class citizens? I've talked about this before. Also, you folks in California, you are being taken for a ride. And those of you who are left who are conservatives, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Our Friends Federation for American Immigration Reform now are fair. We had Dan Stein on the program yesterday. They released a study, and that finds they're providing education, health care, law enforcement, social and governmental services to illegal aliens and their dependents. Cost Californians, you ready for this? $25.3 billion a year in their report, The Fiscal Burden of Illegal Immigration on California Taxpayers. The state has about 3 million illegal aliens, and their 1.1 million U.S.-born children cost the average California household, headed by a U.S. citizen, $2,370 annually. More of the study's key findings. Funding the K-12 through education for children who are themselves illegal aliens. For the citizen children of illegal aliens, accounted for the largest share of the cost, $14.4 billion. The services? Well, it includes supplemental English language instruction. And despite federal funding, the average per pupil cost is $10,450 every year. Justice and law enforcement costs associated with illegal aliens. <coughs> Excuse me. Over $4.4 billion a year. Medical services cost taxpayers for illegal aliens $4 billion a year, including $388 million associated with 68,000 births to illegal alien mothers. Public assistance, $792 million a year. The report finds taxes collect, you know, the, the libertarian Republicans, or just the knucklehead Republicans who go on and on on radio and TV, this is economically, you know, so important to us. They pay taxes the equivalent of approximately $3.5 billion annually. So $25.3 billion per year is the cost. $3.5 billion a year are the taxes paid. By my estimation, the net is oh, almost $23 billion a year. Just Californians are paying for illegal immigration. That is a fiscal crisis for California. Absolute disaster. And you know, uh, even though the illegal alien issue is a federal catastrophe, a federal failure to act, California welcomes it with open arms, program after program. Its politicians think this is great. So it's not completely federal. It's federal and state in that case. But so here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is why Obama gave his phony speech yesterday, blaming Republicans and the Tea Party of all people, of all institutions, for what's going on on the southern border. They've used the law to support this. They've used our tax dollars to support this. They've used their propaganda to promote it. And now we have absolute anarchy when it comes to illegal immigration, the poorest of the poor, the unskilled, the low-skilled, the illiterate are pouring into our country. We don't know who they are. We don't know what illnesses they have. Slipping in, no doubt in my mind, are criminals, possibly terrorists, seeing a weak underbelly in this country. And we still have people, people in office, people on TV, people on radio, special interest ethnic front groups, Still demanding amnesty. They don't call it amnesty. But if you do not secure the border, anything after that is amnesty. Because you and I both know it just is an endless parade of foreigners coming into this country. It's a disaster. It's an economic disaster. It's a health disaster. It's a law enforcement disaster. And it's a national security disaster. Both parties are responsible. Even so-called conservatives who promote this stuff, they're responsible. The idea that this is an economic boon to the country is, is absurd. Absolutely absurd. And here we have Obamacare. Eight million people have, theoretically anyway, signed up. And approximately 1.3 million 
are likely illegal aliens. Congratulations to us. Well, history, you know, everybody, oh, the Supreme Court. Thank God for the Supreme Court. I even heard somebody on Fox today say this is the way the system was set up, you know, to have sober minds on the court where the temperature's lower, where, where a handful of people could pass judgment on what's going on. That's not the way it was set up, actually. Three co-equal branches. Going back about 30, 35 years, ladies and gentlemen, the states were trying to fight illegal immigration. Many, if not most of the states, prevented illegal aliens from even going to public schools. You see, it wasn't an honor to be an illegal alien. You were considered illegal, and so you weren't supposed to be receiving any subsidies, any support. You were discouraged from coming here and staying here. And yes, that phrase, self-deportation, oh, you can't use that! Well, that was the goal. That was the purpose. Now, all that said, 1982, in a case called Plyler, the Supreme Court ruled, as I recall, William Brennan, one of the most radical, outrageous justices in American history, he ruled that illegal aliens had a right to public education, even though the states didn't want illegal aliens to have public education. And then you had congressional action and court action as time went on, providing illegal aliens with emergency health care services. And it went on and on. Most recently, just a few years ago, the Supreme Court ruled against Arizona and for a number of countries from Central and South America, as well as the Obama administration, that Arizona did not have the power to enforce federal law to secure its own borders and protect its own citizens. So the Supreme Court has had a very dirty hand in this business over the years. And as a result, the legal framework, or lack of one, was set by our judicial system. And so, of course, it takes a president who is exercising his inner Mussolini as an imperial president, a petulant man, a man in a hurry, a man who does not love his country because he seeks to fundamentally transform it. And as I've said before, if you want to fundamentally transform something, you don't love it. In fact, he despises so many aspects of it. That's his career. That's his ideology. So he takes advantage of it. So Arizona was the last domino to fall. When the governor and the state legislature said, basically merely said, look, the federal government won't enforce federal law, we'll enforce federal law. We won't change it, we won't enhance it, we'll just enforce it. And the court said, no, the president has discretion to determine how to enforce federal immigration law. And of course, Obama took that to mean, I won't enforce it, in fact, I'll rewrite it. Knowing full well that any challenge at this point would be pointless, and if there was a legal challenge, it would go back to the same justices, and it would take four or five years to get there. So a president who seeks to usurp power, who seeks to change the, nat the uh, nature of the citizenry, who seeks to have open borders, can get away with an awful lot. And the stars have lined up this way. Because you have a Senate that has destroyed itself under Harry Reid, that has as its purpose to advance Obama's agenda and not protect its own prerogatives. You have a House of Representatives that is so beholden to the corporatists that you've got members in the House of Representatives who rely on campaign funding from the U.S. Chamber of, Com of uh, Commerce and whose staffers are lobbyists after they leave the Hill. And so we, the people, we do not support this. We do not want this. And it apparently doesn't matter. Ob uh, Bush has brought it up and pushed it. McCain ran on it and pushed it. Obama pushes it. Boehner wants to push it. McConnell wants to push it. This is really a serious, serious matter where the people and the government are at complete odds over this. And this is one of the reasons why the Republican base so despises the Republican leadership and the Democrat leadership.